Okay, welcome to a work solution video for uh, the specimen paper. Uh, let's look at question one. So this is the physics specimen paper for the trilogy. Um, you'll have done this paper probably as a um, mock paper. Let's read question one. Figure one shows a cyclist with a trailer attached to his bike. Describe how Newton's third law applies to the forces between the bike and the trailer. Okay, so here is the trailer and here is the bike. So if the trailer applies a force, sorry, if the bike applies a force to the trailer, the trailer applies a force to the bike of equal uh, magnitude but opposite in direction. That's Newton's third law. Okay, so uh, trailer applies a force to the bike. I should really try and get my handwriting handwriting legible. Force to bike. Bike applies a force to trailer. Trailer. They are of equal size but opposite in direction, opposite in direction. Okay, question two, a student investigated, sorry, question 1.2, a student investigated how the stopping distance of the bike was affected by the mass of the load. The same person ride the bike throughout the investigation, give two other variables the student should have controlled. Okay, well, it's no good changing the load to see if it takes longer to stop or less to stop if you make the guy go really fast one time and slow the next. So they should definitely control the speed. Control the speed. Should be the same each time. Okay, that's definitely something they should do. Make the speed the same each time. What else should they keep the same? Okay. Oh, you don't want to be doing this on different areas of road. So the grip on the road, the grip on the road should be the same. The grip on the road or the surface should be the same. So now you can see how the load affects the stopping distance, not... Um, how the surface affects the stopping distance or any of the other things we might be looking at. So this shows the results of the investigation. We've got stopping distance here, we've got mass of load here, and you can see that the stopping distance increases with the load. Draw a line on figure two to show how the stopping distance would be different if a heavier cyclist rode the bike. Mm, right, that's quite an interesting one. Let's imagine that the heavier cyclist was 10 kilograms heavier. Notice how the graph doesn't go down to zero. Right, this graph does not go down to zero. Right, when the load was zero, the bike and the cyclist still had mass and they were still taking some distance to stop. So the stopping distance for the thing with no load but still the mass of the cyclist and, and all the rest of it was whatever this distance is it looks like about um, 11.2 meters um, so draw a line how it would be different it would be as though this line here was shifted back a bit so I think it's going to look just like this Oops. It's going to go up in just the same way and it's going to be parallel. I should really be using a, um, a ruler. I think it's going to be parallel as well. Okay, So it just means that um, it would be as though they were starting a bit further along this line, which is kind of what this line is showing. Okay, Nearly missed that question. That's something students do all the time. When it's um, a question at the very end and it's like annotating a graph, they always somehow miss the uh, Miss that mark. That's why you have to always go back and check at the end. Right. At what time? At one time in the investigation, the cyclist was distracted. The distraction increased the stopping distance of the bike, but did not affect the braking distance. Right. So explain why the stopping distance increased. 
Okay, so stopping distance. Whoops, stopping distance. I've got a cat rubbing my leg here. Stopping distance is equal to breaking distance plus thinking distance. Okay, so basically you're driving down the road. The total distance it takes you to stop is the time. Sorry, is the distance it takes for you to notice the thing in front of you, slam the brakes on. That's the thinking distance, and then the time it takes you to stop once the tires have started decelerating you, once you, the braking force has been applied. Um, those two distances added together is your total stopping distance. So essentially, the distraction increases this distance. So stopping distance is equal to braking distance plus thinking distance. So the distraction increases thinking distance. Therefore, stopping distance also increases. We'll stop the brakes on the bike. Whoops, the brakes on the bike. And tires are not affected. Right, they're not affected. So even though, like, it doesn't matter how drunk the person is driving the car, if your um, if your uh, car's in good nick and you put your foot on the brake, the car's still going to come to stop, come to a rest. Um, it's just the person's level of distraction and how much attention they're paying it affects the time it takes for them to put their foot on the brake but a good car is a good car right and especially these days when you've got cars with uh, ABS anti-braking systems so they don't slip and lock um, the car would come to rest in the same amount of distance once your foot is on the, on the uh, brake okay that's question number one stay tuned for question number two